I've applied two coats of wood sealer to the decks and rails, but unfortunately I don't have enough left to do my third coat, so I've gone ahead and ordered more wood sealer and varnish. In the meantime, I'm going to work on templating it out and making the splash guards that are going on top of the foredeck. The splash guards are going to start just forward of the mast step, which is right here. So they're going to start approximately here and angle back and towards the sides of the deck, which will deflect water away from the cockpit. The splash guards also angle forward to assist in deflecting the water. Before I start cutting my final material though, I'm going to make a template so that I can get the arc of the deck here to fit just right. I've decided I want my splash guards to angle forward at approximately 45 degrees. So to set my template to that angle, I've got my speed square here, and I'm just going to tape it in place, and I can use that to angle my template while I scribe the deck. Now I can lean my templating board up against that 45 degree square, and it's going to hold that plywood right so I can scribe the angle of the deck onto my template. So I've got everything in place to scribe my template. I've got it tacked in place with some blue tape, and so now I'm ready to go ahead and make my line. I'm going to use the wood scribe that I got from Kyle Toth. Go check him out on Instagram or his website. So now I'm just going to lay this on the deck and scribe across my template. There we go, it's not perfect, but that'll be a rough cut, and then we'll fine tune it to fit the shape of the deck. So as you can see, that's already fitting pretty close to the deck. Just a little bit of touch up with a hand plane and we'll have a good template. So now you can see we're really close. Just a little bit of light here and here. So what I can do is lay a pencil on its side and scribe a second time. I don't have to take off material all the way down to the line though. I can just make sure I have an equal width away from the line and that'll be the same and I won't have to remove as much material. I think that's a pretty good fit. I still have a little bit of light, but it's pretty consistent through the whole thing. And again, this template's just gonna be for roughing in the actual splash guards, and those will have to be hand fit when I finally put them in place. So now that I have that bottom scribed and fit to match the deck, I need to figure out how I wanna taper the top of the rails down to where they meet the sides of the boat. The snipe class rules say that these spray guards need to be two inches high above the deck but the book Building a Plywood Snipe recommends making them four or five inches high, and that helps shed the water off the boat and keep the cockpit dry. So I've got a batten and a stapler here. I've got a French curve template, and I'm just gonna mark it out and see what looks nice. Yeah, I think that might work. Yep, I think that'll do the trick. Now to rough it out on the bandsaw. So this is right off the bandsaw. Still need to smooth it out with a plane, but I'm pretty happy with that shape and I think I'm gonna keep it.
with my template ready to go, I have some cherry milled up for the splash guards. Now this is the same cherry that I used for the rub rails, so it should match nicely. I'm just going to position my template here, trying to avoid any knots, and then trace it out. Now I can go ahead and cut this out on the bandsaw. I've also gone ahead and set my bandsaw to the bevel on the bottom of the splash guards. It's not going to be super precise because of the curve of the deck and the sweep on the splash guards, but it's going to get it pretty close and make hand fitting them much easier. So here they are roughed in. They're definitely going to take a lot of hand fitting here, but they're pretty close. I'm going to have to install this centerpiece and then scribe them to the centerpiece to get that bevel accurate. I've taken another piece of cherry and cut it at the angle that I want the splash guards to be tilted forward at. It's 55 degrees from the deck level or 35 degrees from vertical. The book How to Build a Wooden Snipe has it as kind of a trapezoidal shape where it has a flat top and then it angles down to the front of the boat like so. I feel like that's kind of big and clunky so what I think I'm going to do is have some more sort of an arc here where I can put in a fastener down in the deck and a fastener here and then I'll blend in this top somewhat with the rub rails and that way it's a lot less material, it's a little more sleek and I can even streamline it so it breaks the waves and so I don't have a little angled edge here that's going to send small amounts of water up over the top of the splash guards. This will just be temporarily fastened in place while I fit the splash guards. Then I'll remove it, we'll finish our uh, varnish work on the deck, and then we'll bed them in and attach them permanently. I fit the port side splash guard, so now let me show you how I did that using the starboard side. First I'm going to just set the splash guard in place and set it at the sweep angle. So to determine that, I measured forward six inches of the after the foredeck and that's where I want the end of the splash guard to meet the rub rail. From there I can move it against the center support. Now I did cut these too long so you can see it overlaps here. So my next step I need to trim some off the end here so that it's not sticking past the center support. To do that I can just move it outboard until it rests on the angle of my center support. Now to pick up this bevel the way I used, I used an uh, angle gauge here. I lined up the movable arm of the angle gauge and I'm holding the angle gauge perpendicular to this splash guard 
and then lining up the other edge of the angle gauge parallel to the face of the center support. And then I've locked it in place. With that, I can transfer this angle over to this other angle gauge and lock this, and now I can use this to set the bevel on my miter saw. For the other angle to pick up for the saw, you can use a pencil or something sharp and just scribe along the face of that center support to get your other line marked on there. I think that's about right. Always make sure your saw is unplugged when you're adjusting it, just for safety purposes. We can creep up on the correct length, so we'll try it at this spot here. All right, still about a quarter to a half inch longer than we need it, and this bevel is not perfect, but as we adjust along the deck here, it's going to settle down, and that is going to affect this bevel. So this one's good enough for now. Now I'm going to work on this. Just by glancing at it, you can tell that the back side of this corner, there's too much material, and that's what's lifting most of this front edge off. So I'm going to trim that down. You can also take a pencil and scribe along but we have to make sure we're holding this at a steady angle. One thing I can do to help with this fit up is clamp a block of wood onto this center support to help me hold the angle of this splash guard. That's going to help with the repeatability as I remove it to fit and put it back in place. With this support in place, I'm going to set my splash guard Make sure my corner up here by the center support is touching and my corner back here is where I want it. Then I'm going to take a nice sharp pencil, lay it down, and scribe along both sides of the splash guard. If there's a spot where the pencil doesn't touch, that's fine. We'll be rescribing it. And the important part is on this boat, you want to keep your pencil going with the longitudinal axis of the boat. That keeps the angle consistent along the scribe. If you're changing your angle of the pencil while you scribe, it's going to give you an inaccurate line. And now I'll repeat the process on the back. So I don't know if you can see it. We've got a bit of a scribe line here before it moves off the splash guard. So we got a lot of material to remove on that corner. And a little bit of material down on this corner in the front. And then in the back, we have a bunch of material on this corner and some material along the back here. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a hand plane and plane to connect those two lines. Once we plane down to that line, we'll bring it back, scribe it a second time. At that point, we should be able to scribe the whole length of the splash guard. We'll plane down to that line, and that should be our final fit for the deck. Then we'll come back and work the bevel there at the center support. A compass plane works really well for this task. I'm just going to set it to follow this bevel and again, plain to connect these lines. You can use your hand here to help guide the bevel so that you're keeping it consistent and controlled. Alright, I'm down to the lines at this corner, so now I'll flip it around and work the other side. You want to go down to the line, but not over the line, because then you're going to lose any frame or reference of where you're at and how much material you're removing. So that's pretty good. Let's take it back and see how it fits. It's already looking a lot better. There's still a big gap at the front, but it looks like on the back side, it's almost flush. There's just a little bit of light showing through. I'm going to check my positioning here and we'll scrub it another time.
Okay, you can see we still have a lot of material up here, a lot down to this corner, but we do have the scribe line on the board now. So hopefully this will be the last scribe we need to do. And you can see here on the back, it's a pretty consistent width along the whole way. That means that our back bevel is pretty close. We just need to bring it down so that it matches the front. That's getting pretty darn close. My bevel at the center support even looks pretty good. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna trim off about another eighth of an inch from the end by the center support so that my end over here matches the port side. After that, I need to trim down a little tight spot here and it looks like I still got a little bit of a tight spot up here by the center support. So I'll probably rescribe it and then hit it with the hand plane some more. So this fit up is about right. Now I need to go and drill and fit my attachment points. I'm going to have two holes drilled into the center support here and then I'm going to have three holes down through into the deck structure. As far as where I'm going to put those three holes, I have one support somewhere in this area and then another longitudinal support this direction as well as the shear clamp under the rail. So I'm planning on putting one in the longitudinal support one in this a thwart ship frame and then one at the end here in the rail. Now to find those, I've got a couple of filled in holes from the screws that I use to clamp it down, but I can also use this stud finder to help myself mark where those are. To make things even easier, I'm going to trace the profile onto my deck. And that way I can locate these along this line. So this is the aft edge of the splash guard, so my screw holes are going to be just forward of it. So I can use my stud guard, and you can tap here, so I know, this, I know the frame is somewhere around here. But I can put the stud finder on, and move it across, and mark either side of it. I can move down mark it again and then use a ruler to connect it so now I have a visual area of where that support is. So I'm going to put my screw somewhere in this area. So that will be one of them. My other one is that longitudinal member up here. This one there were no screws into it so I can use the stud finder going this direction to find that structural piece. So there's one part. Mark the other one. And then connect them with a straight edge. So I'll put my other screw somewhere in here. And then the shear clamp that's easy to locate because it's just right up next to the rails here.
here's the final fit up of the splash guards. We've got a really good fit along the deck. The bevels meet up with the center support really nice and they're super sturdy and secure. All I have to do now is detach them and clean up the top edge here on the belt sander. I'm going to do that off camera and then I'll coat them with wood sealer and give them about six coats of varnish so that they're all ready to reinstall once I finish the wood sealer and varnish on the deck. That's where I'm going to finish up this video. I hope you found it entertaining and useful. I think we learned some good techniques on how to match these bevels and how to scribe these splash guards to fit the deck. If you have any comments or suggestions, please put it down below. And thanks again for watching Make Stuff Nation. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.